Now, from our uh, honorable panel discussions, Professor Saiba Akhtar, former president, Obstetrical and Gynecological Society of Bangladesh, well known professor, proud of Bangladesh, whose invention, Saiba's method, saves lives millions of new mothers is duly invited to lay her very speech. Professor Sarbhartar. I like to thank all of you before I start, especially Bono Shastu Kendro and University of Alberta, who has done a wonderful work which we really needed long before. So, my Thanks to uh, this group. It was really, when I go through it, I think it was really challenging, especially to bring the women of that years in the, for, the, um, for, for the training. I don't know how the 60 to 75 years, really elderly women, how they have been brought to the uh, center, and they have, so many women have been recruited. I really like to congratulate the group for these things. And from this study, they have shown that among those groups, 32% of women are incontinent. Actually, we don't have specific data uh, of the urinary incontinence among the women. And this incontinence is not only for that group. I know it increases with the group, but urinary incontinence is also present in all women, women of all groups, reproductive, all reproductive disorders. And regarding pelvic floor muscle shaming, it was really more challenging, not only being that this is women, how they have been trained on it, and how they have been motivated to continue the, uh, the, the studies. And the, about the, uh, they have really these things that depression is always overlooked in our society, how the women are feeling. All the, I am actually dealing with the incontinence for decades. Although I work mainly on the obstetric fistula, but as I work on the fistula, I have to come across with the inner incontinence due to other reasons also. I know that these women uh, have also a study. Majority of those women suffer from depression, and even they have suicidal tendency also. And there are records that uh, many women have attempted suicide and, and suicide also. From this study, what I was thinking, this is a very good study, and the 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 society. Um, for the furthermore, when he thinks this is a study, definitely I understand when this study was done, it involves a lot of financial supports and everything, financial supports, but ultimately I was thinking that how we can make it sustainable in our country. So this is, I think, Gorosh Aspokandro has to think over it that bringing the women and then giving the exercise, also training the paramedics, that involves, the, uh, that involves a lot of uh, financial support, but how we can incorporate it in our system. So I think that needs to be pursued to the, our government, to the health, how can we incorporate it in our health systems. And this exercise, and this exercise, incorporation of exercise is not only important for the uh, elderly women, also the women of reproduct other reproductive age. There are not many women here, but when I am an obstetrician and gynecologist, when you sit in our study, I'm sure that many of them have suffered from these problems, but even the educated people, they also feel shy to disclose it, but they do suffer and it is not it that hampers their creativity and also they suffer from depression. And for the prevention of this incontinence, baby pro muscle exercises, there is evidence, it is very evidence based. And one thing I don't know how the education, the education 
quadrant that question yes was uh, how they educated the women. And evidence shows that pelvic floor muscle exercise is more important, beneficial for the prevention of uh, incontinence if it is done during the first pregnancy, not after childbirth. If the exercise is done during the first pregnancy, there is some evidence that there is, there is more prevention of, significant prevention of urinary incontinence. So I, I, it was not shown, but the, uh, it was not scale out, but the question, what are the education, about the education syndicates, what was there. And you have mentioned about the pain and discomfort. Uh, I really like to know that what source of pain and discomfort. Discomfort definitely when fit to do this exercise. And how they adapted these exercises. Uh, exercises. And see, and what I said, so the impact of these projects on the I already told about the sustainability and the uh, what the physiotherapist was this physiotherapist from Bangladesh or the physiotherapist came from uh, Canada uh, that is my question and the parents they have selected the paramedics I like to know what is the background experience and what is the of these paramedics and how the paramedics should have been trained. Uh, can they, uh, uh, how they can uh, train the other women, how efficiently they have trained. You have shown that they have trained them properly and they also have followed up. And uh, I think it is, Nicholas also mentioned that 72 people could show how exercise, uh, the uh, home exercise cheap. How would this home, this woman of this, this is the, I think so you told about the women. And this women of our uh, villages, they are really tired how to maintain their feet, which I was wondering actually. Uh, and <coughs> the, the study we have done in 16 villages, uh, do you think it represents the uh, country, our country, can it represent our country incidence? And, if it is not, does Kanashtra Kendra have a policy or plan to do that in other areas of the Bangladesh outside this to make a, this is maybe this is a, this is a good experience they can make another from further, further follow-up studies so that we, in addition to the other uh, aim of their study, we will know what is the incidence of incontinence in our country. And delays uh, from our experience, we know we told the delays women are, uh, are, are uh, wanted to tell you about these two other women. But uh, even there, from our experience, we have seen during the training period, and it will be to women and all the participants to excellent. But most of the trainees, because I'm proud of our Bangladesh women are really intelligent. But afterwards, you know, when they go back, in all things, they started doing whatever they are doing. How we can motivate these parents and also women so that they continue what they have promises? And is there any follow up plan of the conscious of Android? And that, that is one of my questions. And Anyway, really it is a very good exercise, but the ex how this module of exercise can be, can, can be shared with other places. I already spoke with Dr. Reza that can you, your group can come and do, uh, teach our questions or our... Uh, uh, I have a 20 bed free hospital in where we did all but all the back injury, women with problems of back injury, like fistula, prolapse, perineal tear, vaginal stress, like this, and many of them has incontinence. Fistula definitely is a separate entity, but in women who have prolapse and comes to prolapse, we also deal with the incontinence questions. So how these people, who paramedics, who have been changed, how they can disseminate and they change 
that they can they can get the leadership of changing the other people's products and to try to see it. That is, I think that's possible. And if one has to kind of uh, take it to mandate to impose it, and this, I think, is when we do it. We should not just take it only for the elderly women of 60 years or more, but it should be for all the reproductive residents. Anyway, thank you very much. Thank you. Now, Dr. Kausar Asana, Professor, Jansky Grant School of Public Health, Bragg University, is duly requested to share her valuable speech on this occasion. Assalamualaikum and uh, good morning still. I'm respected chair and chief guest and uh, firstly I must congratulate uh, the researchers from University of Alberta and also from Bangladesh Kendo. Especially I would like to uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Zafullah Kyuvri who is not here. Yes. Yes. Okay. Zafullah is here. Yes. So he's actually our official pioneer in Bangladesh, and I'm so happy that Zafullah, you have managed to do this study in Bangladesh. And uh, one of the good things I, I heard that uh, Sai Papa already mentioned all those things that I wanted to say, but uh, I am quite impressed with the study design because this kind of study is not very easy. And we have seen that it's not only uh, difficult during uh, the trial period, even when they have the follow-up and scaling up the rollout. And rollout is becoming more difficult. So it's not an easy thing in the way. But I can see that the way this design has been made, I'm sure that this is going to be a successful intervention in Bangladesh and beyond Bangladesh. So. Uh, Especially, um, I have a few of the things that I wanted to ask, uh, which is really critical for the policy makers, uh, especially the cost. Costing is uh, whatever we feel that maybe it is cheap, but uh, uh, in terms of the country, we need to think about that. What will be the cost in Bangladesh and for globally as well? And this uh, problem is not a problem in the developing country. Even in the developed country, we have seen that uh, the urinary incontinence is a problem. So it means that uh, we need to be, it's quite challenging for every, every country, they have different contexts and we have to understand that how this can be replicable in other countries as well. And um, one of the things I didn't uh, hear, but probably must be in the data, about the age of the women, because it's 60 to 75. I was thinking that uh, at the age of 60 and at the age of 75, so right difference. So what are the things actually in terms of women's uh, to be, uh, I have seen that the women are actually mostly they stay back, but it is quite probably challenging for reaching out 75 years women. So that's how uh, we need to also figure it out in terms of designing our intervention in the country that uh, how could we reach all those women who are 60 or who could be 75. And uh, another thing is that uh, it's about the men because it's not the problem of women. Men are also suffering, maybe the severity is, among, is higher among the women, but uh, I was reading before coming to this meeting that uh, what, how men and women are suffering in different parts of the world. So they have different problems, maybe it has not come out of the study, but in terms of our thinking, because we are, many people are here, and we are thinking about this urinary incontinence. So let's not stick to women only, and not sticking to 60 to 75 years. We need to come to the reproductive age, because we have seen that women are suffering from different problems, as Dr. Saiba, Professor Saiba Akhtar already mentioned that uh, uh, there are evidence in different studies which shows that if you start training women in early pregnancy, it actually helps or prevents urinary incontinence afterward. So these are quite critical things to be taken into consideration for the policy makers, practitioners, and uh, especially in Bangladesh uh, for the government. And NGO is quite prominent in this country. So they should also take into consideration that how we can 
work in this specific area and uh, um, also mentioned about this uh, um, few other mobilities that we usually bring uh, here, uh, utricolas and fistula. These are huge problems. So I'm uh, actually at this moment I'm at the university, but I spent my whole life at RAC and working in the area of reproductive health, especially in maternal health. So in maternal health, when we work, started working in reproductive morbidity, we found that you know, for fistula you can do this, for prevention of perineal is possible, and then next thing is the uterine prolapse, what you can do. But urinary continence actually is uh, uh, triggered us that what should be our strategy. So we found that there is a pelvic floor muscle training, and uh, that I didn't know very well, the way you described today, the seven states, and I was reading the 12 states, there are few things up there, but I was thinking that in terms of women, uh, how, it's, uh, whether you can do some of the analysis that uh, what would be the least uh, kind of exercise you can do that would also reduce uh, urinary uh, incontinence because that's important. You can research, you can do many things, but in practical life, you have to be very, very practical that what would be the bigger uh, intervention we can do for this specific uh, population. And uh, one is PMPF, and the second, uh, I think, is very critical is the exercise, um, uh, mobility exercise means probably walking, brisk walking. So we can understand that it's not exercise as well, we have to walk as well. So these are very, very important things, not only in terms of reducing urinary incontinence, I can see that it would also affect other kind of, not reproductive morbidity, but other morbidities as well. So I'm sure that uh, this will also reduce the cost. I'm thinking as a quality practitioner that cost is very critical for us. So we have to understand that if we would like to package an intervention for specific age group here, the elderly population. So how can we also package an intervention which is cost effective and also at the same time we can address the specific population. So I think I can stop here because uh, there are follow-up study and it's coming out and you can see more in that uh, study. But I request also from the follow-up study and your existing data to do some costing. Otherwise, it may be, it will be challenging for any <coughs> policy makers to take into consideration in the program country contest. Thank you so much. Again, I must congratulate you for your study. Now, the highly respected freedom fighter, Professor Lala Pardini Banu, Vice-Chancellor of Bono Bisho is honestly requested to raise her voice on the dais on the issue of the program. Professor Lala Pardindan. Good morning and congratulations and thanks to this study group from Alberta University and Gonoshastro Kendo. And all are related with this study. Thanks everyone. Now Recently, we observed the World Women's Day. But in the world now, that Professor Sabira and I also found, there is no study or no data about the women suffering from incontinence. It is, this is the sufferings of the old women because of the relax of the pelvic muscle but also that they handle uh, delivery, that is younger people, rather women, they 60, before 68 years of this. So now, the, you cannot hide the urinary incontinence uh, patient because it is very bad smell, bad sufferings, and very unsocial, they cannot socially attend any program, so we must now 
thanks to people of GK and Alberta that we are now doing something for the uh, women of the old days or even the lean continents. So above one is saying that men. So this study was in 2010 uh, in the 535 villages under GK. The old elderly people, women and men, for more than 40,000 residents of our area, GK healthcare area, they found that over 60 years of age, 30% men and women complaining of some sort of urinary incontinence. But the poor, the village elderly people are more in percentage. Now, here also that at present we are, the study is showing that 33 percent of the women in the village are having the sufferings of the urinary incontinence. So, uh, Sabrina, Professor Sabrina, I want to tell you about the GK paramedic. So, we are the pioneer to uh, have this paramedic system, just like a barefooted doctor in China. But the idea came from the field hospital during the 71, that it, uh, 10 or 9 years of education with some primary health care education uh, training, you can have covered the health service. Always not think about the doctors. Doctors alone cannot do anything or improve the most population health care. So uh, GK is doing now the paramedic system also in the university. We have the physiotherapy, BSc honors and MSc course also. So there are two fresh students are coming for BSc honors in physiotherapy and also the paramedic. Those have training in GK three years or five years. They also get the admission for their physiotherapy, BSc and MSc. Again, they are going back to the Ganeshastra Kendra for this type of program. So we have this uh, program study. We found there are need of three groups. One is the village paramedic, reside in the village and giving the service as a primary health care and doing the uh, evaluation of everything and socio-economic condition of the population under GK cover have register sensor, everything is available. Second is the some paramedic are uh, research paramedic. So they get some training from this group to what to do about this. So they are doing the open selection for the study and also the counting of that bell for the illiterate women. This is a good device to have this uh, three pair reverse bell. So they are follow also complete the data and everything. And another group is the physiotherapist. So we have another group, Dr. Kader, uh, sorry, Dr. is telling that Physiotherapist, we are training, in the training of community-based physiotherapists. Those are paramedic in GK, three-month physiotherapy training. Now the whole world, the elderly population is increasing and the non-communicable diseases are increasing. So we need more physio community-based physiotherapists or paramedic trained as a physiotherapist. And uh, the exercise mainly that group or in the home that was covered by the physiotherapist from the, our university 
graduated, but they are the main parameter of uh, GK also. So another thing about the cost. If you see this uh, program, there was no need of hospitalization, no instrument, no specialized needed, no doctor. And the, uh, our study in the village, in the home, and we have this sub-center close to their home, so that area. So no need to ship from the house or go for this study far away. So it is possible, I think, that uh, we can do it. And we must do, because this poor woman and this uh, village woman and also the city woman, because there was a study in Japan in a small scale and also in India that more elderly than nearly 80 or 85, uh, they are living in the wealthy urban area but still have the urinary incontinence. So they improved 44% by this pelvic muscle training and also by the mobility training. The mobility is not only walking, they have also shown, I think, that uh, in the paper you see some small type of exercise also, they can do it in the home, like uh, extra mobility exercise. And also the walking is okay. So it is possible. And it is the, I think, everybody after follow result, we can give more constructive news to the, our country and outside country to plan, the future plan for these people. It is very low cost because if you see how much costing it will need, you can yourself and ask very little. Another thing is that to have other parts. Now in Bangladesh, we don't have too much physiotherapists. And also the physiotherapists are now willing to go to villages. So we can train the paramedic and as a physiotherapist only for doing this muscle, uh, muscle training. They can do, they can carry out this. Because it is a very simple if they are think that sincerely they can do it, okay? And as a, a final, I am telling that, uh, finishing, that we must improve the quality of the life of the woman. So for that, this study is the milestone for our women of the world. Thank you very much. Requests from the platform, Jeffrey and Charlie. Could you say a word? Would you be willing to say a word or two? As I said in my 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 own comments, this study we just heard about was initiated and made possible by Dr. Cherub's involvement. And I'm delighted he's with us today, and even more delighted he is willing to say a word or two.
freedom is tied on Bangladesh. In that, we realize only very few doctors are available to help the wounded freedom fighters and their refugees. The number of, in those days, nurses were mostly minorities, Christian and the Hindus. Not very Christian left country, but Hindus, the left being tortured and when you have to do the health care, how can you do the health care healthy without the nurses, without the health workers? So that is the time we thought, look into the nursing curriculum and the care system. We need to look at it a different angle. We realize basic health care can be taught very easily with to way to extend. So that is the beginning of paramedic training of GK, to be honest. Similarly, so take the case of diarrhea, which was at one time the main killer disease. The knowledge was available, both in Dhaka and Calcutta, the treatment and other, but it's not available to the masses. After the war in 1971, when GK realized this knowledge should be spread out, we started sending our health worker to ICPRP in those days, you know, called cholera hospitals. But Brad means a measure. Brad, Abel Thai, you say, send every woman to every village home. Treat them. How so simple? Into your salt and sugar or molasses and a glass of water. And as many times you have got it in diarrhea, you drink it. Such a simple knowledge was what it was, it, it was, uh, it was kept in, in the laboratories, not to the masses. So that's why I say that sometimes many of the major health innovations were unnecessarily been loved. When we, we are indulgent, we are very ardent for our family plan. You say, tomorrow is too late. You must go right toward there. You will you will be surprised. And when you are young you do something mischief. I had the weather our page in the shape of the world of one. I said, you should have a blessing to me, I'm going to tell you, sir. <laughs> I said, but I have got family complete. I said, it doesn't matter. But you have that, it will prove that it's so simple, it will give you, you laugh. But you see, similarly we realize that family planning, if we want, the pill is the easy. If you do the pill, you must change the blood pressures. My medical brother said, no, no, you cannot keep the blood pressure between to non-doctors. They are not physicians. They can do as if they want to keep it. So sometimes we need very basic things. Simple things is not available. Yeah. But <coughs> Cheney and other, we realize that they have that. With exercise, with brother exercise, it can be done. We discuss that. So why not? Try, give it try, give it try. It's so simple thing. Like a, a couple of weeks training. Okay. So I think that in many of our our you want to raise the question of sustainability. In this Laila has already mentioned, it's a very really cost effective, it doesn't need much money. It is already the already our people in the physiotherapy department in the paramedic, in the nurses, they are getting training, but the money will be spent for them. So only thing to, we have to look into the curriculum and to push four or six weeks physiotherapy training, they know the better, they know the youth and all that, and they give them a bit of extra lessons. Their muscles and physiology of it, 
So you do not cost much money. It is the intention. Many things is this. It's like the politicians and the government for whom they are willing to work. Are they for the masses? Are they for the common people? Or for the very few of the few? By sending to Singapore, you can give a big headlines. But same operations is done in Bangladesh. Or sometimes it is not even needed. So I think it is the most important thing. We should keep our eyes and ears open and think of the masses who are shouldering the whole country. They are benefit, keep the country going. I think it's an important study. I think all my people who are there, it can be easily promoted and we can do a much larger study without much money. Now the main work is done, we have got all the information. And I'm sure GK would help any organization want to do it. You will give it your support, training, and other things. Thank you. Now, in the events of experience sharing, the respected consultants are requested to hold their opinions and feelings successively. Our urinary incontinence research exercise group on sugar and curry, Dujon, Sukhya Khatun, Ebon Nurjahan Khatun, Jada, basic training, Ebon follow up training, Dutoti on sugar and curry, Bartomane Halatsen. I mean, another owner of Kobo, Sukhya Khatun, Ebon Nurjahan. खातून केपिल वाली ग्राम श्रीपुर गाजीपुर उन आगे रोबी का काम आते साथे शेयर करो जो
Thank you. 